morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is where you're watching this. It's Some Good Education News from UEN. If you're not familiar with John Krasinski's show, Some Good News on YouTube, you're about to see a mediocre imitation of it. Just as John likes to share good news from around the country with his circle of entertainment friends, we're gonna share some good news about what's happening with Utah education. So with that being said, educators and parents know better than most about how much of a trying time this has been. Through it all, Utahns have found inspiration and hope. In the world of Utah education, there has been some good news. Let's take a look. So, to kick this off, we reached out to the community to find some good news stories, and here's a special one to start off the series. Amy Barton, a teacher from Coral Canyon Elementary, shared her student's journey through reading with us on her Facebook page. In her own words, at the beginning of this year, I welcomed a student to my first grade classroom who was a recent immigrant from Central America. He was shy, overwhelmed, and spoke not a single word of English. As we went into learning at home mode, I was very concerned about how his progress would be affected, but his mom made sure that he met with the ESL para every day via Google Meet for language practice and reading tutoring. Today, in our third to last session, he patiently but excitedly waited through the whole activity until he could read an entire book to me. It was one of the most amazing teaching experiences of my 23 year career. We were so inspired by Amy's post that we wanted to hear Eddie read for ourselves. Let me introduce you to the new reader, Eddie from Coral Canyon Elementary. Thanks for joining us today. Your teacher tells us you are an amazing reader. Will you read some of your book to us? Fox the Tiger. Tigers are big. Tigers are black. Tigers are sneaky. Fox are big. Fox are fast. Fox. Whoosh. Fox are sneaky. Fox are the best. Thank you so much for reading to us. It was really nice to meet you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you, Eddie, for reading and to his mom, Lendi, for helping us connect by Google Meet. Let's share a few more highlights. The Horizonte Instruction and Training Center staff realized that seniors at the school were feeling unmotivated and disconnected in these uncertain times, so they found a way to uplift their spirits. The school provided a social distancing cap and gown ceremony for the seniors that included everything from balloons to cake. Joshua Bell, principal of the school, stated that the school has planned engaging events like this every week until the end of the school year. Next up, Mrs. Winslow at Canyon Creek Elementary in Farmington took advantage of the empty playground and repainted the entire United States on the blacktop. Looks great. When we were looking into this story, we also learned that she is making masks for all the teachers at the school. Thank you, Mrs. Winslow. Following up on our highlights is an in-depth discussion about meeting the challenges of remote learning in a remote area. Let's now talk to Kim Schaefer, principal of Whitehorse High School in Montezuma Creek, Utah. So Kim, to kick it off and uh, get started, I understand that you're in an area that has been hit especially hard by the pandemic in your community. Um, you're very busy right now. You're working on a master schedule for next year while also finishing up this school year, and we're in this situation where we're all shut down from the pandemic. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your school and your learning community? Uh, well, I've been in this community for over 20 years, which I think helps with the, uh, you know, we have longstanding relationship and trust with our families and our teachers. And um, it is a challenging time. We're not, we're not able to gather in any form and our scholars live in a dispersed range. You know, when we were having regular school, some of our scholars were riding the bus an hour to get to our school. And uh, we're, we now have 10 buses delivering 1,250 meals. That's, that's the breakfast and then 1,250 lunches. So 2,500 meals are going out on our buses every week. That kind of is what stands out to me is that our community is small, but it's dispersed over quite a bit of land. I think that that presents a challenge. 
in and of itself. And then on top of that, there's not any local internet infrastructure. So we haven't been able to really do any kind of online learning in a consistent way. We're not able to get um, content through Canvas or Nearpod or any of those other tools out to students because they, in some cases, only 30% of your population have access to the internet. Um, what did you do to shift the instruction? Because it sounds like you've got your priorities lined up. Take care of the kids in the community first. And once kids are taken care of and they're fed, then we can worry about learning. So tell us a little bit about how you shifted to a unique problem solving approach that you've taken. Our first mission was to make sure all of our scholars got food. So from April on, we did one home learning lesson for our whole seven through 12. We used a book. It's a picture book. That book is about a mountain. And then we connected to science by sending home some mystery seeds and some instructions about how to make a, a plant, a planter. <laughs> and then all along we were asking scholars to read and write. And we also were pulling in, it's growing season. We listened to the Navajo Nation president, Jonathan Nez talk about it's growing season. Everybody's gonna be home, but we know lots about agriculture and planting. And, and there's all kinds of teachings around that. So we were trying, uh, that's culturally responsive teaching. And so we were trying to say, there's a lot of knowledge and skills inside the home. How can we uh, pull in and connect to that already existing knowledge for agriculture, the stories about the different plants, planting season. And it was just a wonderful thing that kind of came about because we were trying to connect. And, and really what the bottom line was is, we were trying to make everybody understand home learning is not a scary thing. You can do it. You've been doing it all along. Parents are the first teachers. You know, there's all these different things to do each day, all week long. And then at the end of the week, there was this wonderful, you know, depth of knowledge, three or four questions, synthesizing, creating. You just described the most amazing process I've ever heard of for dealing with this pandemic. Uh, educators around the country have been like thinking, uh, we can't be in school. And we all know that place is like the key element to successful learning, like being in a safe place that fosters that type of thought and collaboration and critical thinking. And how do you do that with technology? And the irony here is you've done it with no tech or low tech because your packet has gone home and then allowed the home to become that place of learning. That's just magical. Um, mm -hmm. And I really thank you for not just taking the time to, to speak with us, but for, for all that you've done. You've really <laughs> risen to a challenge that, you know, most people would just shy away from, or, or I don't know what the words for it are, but you guys have overcome and found incredible solutions that will improve education not just during this COVID-19 shutdown, but for learning in the years to come. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any like words of wisdom or advice for a teacher or administrator out there right now that's struggling with connecting with community and, and what they should do and think about maybe over the summer to prepare for next fall if we have to go into a, a, a situation kind of like this? What would you suggest? Well, I, I think I would suggest the same thing today that I suggested to my full staff on March 16th. You know, we're going to look out for kids and we're going to do the right thing. And um, there's no sense in talking about what it used to be or what we don't get to do. It's moving. So let's move with it uh, and let's find some solutions. People need to change their priorities. And it's not about it's not about student achievement on those end of year tests. It's about student well-being. Are they getting their food? Are they learning something in a way that, that supports them in their family situation? And kind of let go of that in the box thinking of, it, well, it's gotta be this and it's got, there's no, it doesn't, it seems like the rules are changing. And so educators need to change their mindset with the new circumstances and, and stop fighting it. Like just go help kids. 
You couldn't have said it better. That's exactly what's happening and what a great way to look at it. Uh, you're an amazing person and an amazing administrator, Kim Schaefer. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And I want to just say that your community is so lucky to have you there, not just as an educator, but as a leader for the school and for the whole community. Thank you for all that you're doing. Next up, our resident meteorologists are out in the field with the current Utah weather forecast. The weather is looking good. good. Here at Some Good Education News, we're not just about sharing good news, we're sharing some good tech tips. Jared Fossen from UEN's professional development team is standing by to share some of the new features in Gale Elementary. Take it away, Jared. Hi, this is Jared Fossen, and I am in Gale in Context Elementary, giving you a sneak peek of the new look of what was formerly known as Kid InfoBits and now is Gale and Context Elementary. So you'll notice that on the landing page, it looks a little bit different than you're used to. They have an I wonder question right here. And if you're not really, if you don't really wonder about the food plate, you can hit new question and get a new topic that you might be wondering about. It also has lots of different topics here. I'm gonna select animals and all of these are broken into subcategories. We'll select reptiles and amphibians and the coolest reptile of all is a chameleon. So we're gonna select that. And let's go to this first article here on chameleons. You'll notice that this is broken into different reading levels, level one and level two for this one. And you might look at this and go, man, that font's a little bit hard to see. I'm gonna make the text bigger. So I'm gonna select that and oh wow, this is much easier to see. I don't even need my glasses for this. Fantastic. I can also have it read off to me and translate, and it's got all the features that Gale has for everything else, and it just has a new fresh look. So check it out as soon as you can. Thanks, Jared. I'm Michael Hackerinen, and that's our show. Make sure to check out our resources to keep you learning at home at uen.org slash learn at home. And for more good news stories, follow the UEN Homeroom Podcast. If you know of any other stories that should be featured, share them via social media and use the hashtag UENGoodNews to tag our social media profiles. We'll see you next time. And until then, stay safe, stay kind, keep learning.